Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of taking responsibility for your own life. We've all known someone who is constantly blaming other people for their shortcomings. They are constantly using the blame game in every aspect of their life. They blame their boss and say that's why they hate their job. They blame their parents or partner for not being able to provide the house or car they want. The list continues. Life changes the moment we are able to take full responsibility for our lives, whether it is our own failures or our attitude. The only person to blame if you're not happy with anything in your life is you. The great news is because of this, we have the ability to change anything in our life for the better by simply making the decision to do so. By taking responsibility for our lives, we're able to be the creators of our own destiny. We also then begin to harness our personal power because we understand and take pride that we and we alone are responsible for our own destiny. As the psychologist Albert Alice quotes, the best years of our lives are the ones in which you decide your problems are your own. You do not blame them on your mother, the ecology or the president. You realize that you control your own destiny. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. You know, you've worked with such big artists as well. You've worked with Sia, Beyonce. Who's been your favorite artist to collab with so far? I always say Rihanna and it's true because we did a song that went to number nine on the billboard charts in the playlist. Uh, which meant that no company didn't support it and it just went there by itself and this was before Umbrella and it was really cool for me to pick that rhythm out with my friend's studio that I took her to in Jamaica. What does luxury mean to you? Luxury. In India, I discovered that true luxury isn't something you buy off a shelf. True luxury is a feeling that you are the Maharani of your world. And it can be all designed around you. All the beauty is yours. All the music is yours. India showed me that luxury doesn't follow designers and brands. True luxury follows its own heart. Incredible India. All natural sweetener, flavor all. 20 flavors to choose from. The perfect substitute for sugar and artificial sweetness. Flavor all by Greenish. Flavor all from Greenish. Now available at Rexall Pharmacies. Next up on the show, we have one of the most recognizable names in the music industry, Sean Paul. In the span of his career, Sean has collaborated with artists like Beyonce, Rihanna, Sia, J Balvin, and more. Known for his unique sound, Sean is also using his success to make a difference with the Sean Paul Foundation. Sean, thank you for being on the show today. How are you doing? Hey, I'm very good. We're <laughs> chilling on the beach right now. Good. Clearly, look at that background. <laughs> yeah, man, underneath the tree. Honestly, know. it's it's such a pleasure and honor to have you on the show. I'm a very, very big fan right. of yours. Right. So you're a legend in the music industry. Let's talk about when did you realize your passion for music? Uh, at probably 13 years old or probably 11 years old is when I started to hear like a lot more dance or music. Dance I was just becoming something. Um, and uh, I started to hear a lot of hip hop, which I love. And those two musics kind of got me to start thinking maybe I'd be a producer. About age 15 is when I tried to get um, my mom to buy me a keyboard mm -hmm. in an old, in a old um, flea market type thing on Sunday. So she did buy it for me. And, um, and you know, ever since I've been trying to make beats and trying to rhyme about age 17 I started to rhyme and then been history since then 
I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And I read somewhere that you played on the national polo team in Jamaica and that you gave water that polo, yeah. Water polo, and you gave it up to pursue your passion for music. And obviously, it paid yeah, off. Let's, let's talk about that decision. And yeah. did you ever think you'd get this much success? Uh, yeah, no, I didn't. I, I didn't know where it would go, but I always loved dance and music, and thought that I could represent in a big way. Uh, so I love my country, and I represented uh, for for uh, in swimming and water polo for my country for quite a few years. So um, you know, that's uh, it's something I was kind of used to to rep for the country. So I never really put water polo down. I just kind of became more popular as the artist, and people didn't know about water polo for me. So at first I was still doing water polo a long time. It's a relatively small sport in Jamaica. So, uh, you know, the people who do represent the country, we all know each other for sure. And um, um, yeah, so we, we did that for a few years, even while I was still doing music, but then music got really hectic. And I put it down for a while. And recently I picked it up. In the past two years I've been playing again. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's just discipline, you know. Uh, it, it teaches you a lot of discipline. It teaches me to to kind of set my goals and know that I want to reach to to, to that goal by a certain time. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's helped with business, it's helped with music, it's helped with relationships, it's helped with many things in life, you know what I mean? That, yeah. that type of discipline. Mm -hmm. And you have such a unique sound. When was your big break? When you really like dove into this industry and you, what was your first major milestone? First major milestone, and there's been, there's been quite a few for me, like uh, in terms of where I thought, you know, oh wow, this is huge, but then something else came and beat that, and something else came and beat that. Yeah. So, one of the first things was to be able to perform at Stone Love, it was a big sound system in Jamaica. To perform at Stone Love's 25th anniversary was a huge thing for me. Mm -hmm. A big major sound that was, uh, you know, something that, that was just, uh, I was probably 21 at the time, so, or 20, 24 probably. So like, I was the same age as this sound, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, that was the first big step. And then to perform at Sting was another one, which is a big Christmas time yeah. event. And then after that, there's so much different ones. But to have my song on the radio in the United States and also places like Canada and, and, and London, to have my song be nominated and win a Grammy in 2001, yeah. I believe. And also to, to win um, American Music Award in 2006. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, those things all stand out. But day to day, there's different milestones that do happen. Like just recently, uh, Rockabye, the song I'm on with Clean Bandits, kind of went to a million, a billion streams. Yeah, I saw. So, yeah. So, so, so you know, there's things that come and beat it every time and it's not, not not a one thing that's just like been the highlight for me i appreciate many different things many different steps in life you know what i mean so yeah i i, I give thanks that they keep on um manifesting you know? yeah absolutely and you know our show is all about inspiration and showcasing people like you have, who have made it and have, has achieved great success so i want to talk about you know of course you've had a lot of success but let's talk about one failure or obstacle you think like what kind of challenges did you have when you first got into the industry and how did you kind of overcome that uh, you know where, where i come from in jamaica is called uptown so i i, I came from a middle class society but a, a lot of people believe that uh, in, uh, that's just a, a, a very posh lifestyle or easy lifestyle. And, um, you know, my, my point to them is that everybody has challenges and everybody suffers some things, you know. So uh, I did grow up uptown as a middle class kid, but that's just where uh, it, it was weird because this music that I do comes from ghetto, from the ghetto people. and. It was a taboo at the time. So it was something that I faced that was kind of difficult at first, but it helped me to stand out and I just embraced it and tried to do as much as I could uh, and, and let people be, uh, you know, not see that part of me. So that was the first obstacle. And then obviously I have another obstacle, which is the language I speak in is Patois in my songs, especially. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of hard for people to understand. So that's been another obstacle. Um, but those are things that are, you know, those are your natural fights in life. Everybody has their cross to bear. 
so I just looked at things like that. So I've never really received um, a fight from someone, so to speak, uh, you know what I mean, in the business, like trying to sabotage me or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, if so, I didn't notice it and, and, and that went over my head. So most of the things is just, you know what I mean, obstacles and stumbling blocks that everyone has naturally in their life on their own. They have their own crosses to bear and I just took it with, um, took it out with a grain of salt and, um, and tried to do my best, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and you've done amazing, obviously. <laughs> um, was there ever a time you felt like you wanted to give up? Because, you know, everyone is trying to hustle. Everyone's trying to become successful. And a lot of people get discouraged, you know? Was there ever a time you wanted to give up? Um, you know, I always, every time, I'm not really someone to give up. But there's times where you do feel like, yo, does this make sense? Yeah. And I, every time... I'm able to weigh it out with when I used to be in school or when I used to work in a bank uh, for a year and a half, I, for a nine to five, and I was like, those, this, whatever, whatever problems I'm having now, this beats that by far. Yeah. And so, so I'm good with it. You know what I mean? Um, there are problems in the mu music industry. It's not just all easy. It's very hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you know. I would much rather it than a nine to five and to be able to set certain time for my own self. You guys, hold on, hey, 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 don't let that. I got kids here, I gotta be the <laughs> big uncle and daddy right now. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're using your platform to do good as well. I know you have the John Paul Foundation. Let's, let's talk about yeah. that, why you started it. You know, my country is a very beautiful country. It's a paradise for a lot of people, but paradox, for people who live here, uh, as I said before, it's an impoverished place sometimes, you know what I mean, for a lot of people. And um, you know, me growing up uptown in a middle class society um, would always find it very difficult when I had friends that were from the ghetto. Uh, it annoyed me that they didn't have the same opportunities as me. They didn't have the same facilities as me. Um, or, or just 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 some experiences you know uh there's still some people in jamaica who who don't have proper running water and yeah. live in sink so sink i'm talking about aluminum sink like what some people would use to put on a shed like a bus shed this is something that people live in here you know what i mean and and mm -hmm. when it rains muddy water runs under their bed so um i i um I've been into people's houses and I sit down and smoke weed and we talk and, and um, you know, I, I, it, the, the, it, it's, my, it's my responsibility to help as much as I can. This government doesn't really seem to have to provide for all of that. Um, wh whichever problem, you know, there's, there's problems on both sides, on the government side and on the people's side where we could all do better. And so I'm trying to be the change in life and, and try to do better for who I can. So the foundation is, especially during disasters, come to help people. Uh, and during this pandemic has been something very crazy. So we've been pointed that um, wanted to help farmers out this time around. So we built watersheds, which is like a, like a bus stop with a roof and it catches the water off the roof into mm -hmm. the tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know that direction. Also, give out care packages in this pandemic time. You know, a lot of people not not able to work, and um, it's already been a strange society in terms of um, money. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, care packages is things like you know cleaning products and you know food and. And a little stuff just to help people over a, a certain period of time to help people get um, through it, you know? Mm -hmm. Other than that, before I've helped people during the hurricane in terms of we helped to fix up a couple of schools because we heard that schools weren't going to be open for quite some time, like like three months. So we fixed it up before to let them do that. Hey, Jake, come back here. Come. <laughs> I mean, being Mr. Mom right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, come Jakey, come. Yeah, uh, so we, we, we try to help as much as we can where we can. You know, we can't help everybody. 
but mm-hmm. also I've been, you know, trying to help with a school called Arden okay. High School, which is where the first band started in Jamaica and the whole ska music started and rock steady, and it came from from there. So I'm helping out with that. I brought them up to a computer program where they've had a band for a long time. I'm talking about a big band that would play at football matches. Um, and they're one of the best in the whole region. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give them a little bit more. There was a lot of stars that came from in Jamaica that came from this school. You know, um, people that, that just grew up there and learned music there first. And so I wanted to with the foundation with that. So it's been something that, um, what can I say? Been blessed and I, I try to bless back you. Have the water, bro. Mm-hmm. You alright? I understand, I understand, bro. I understand. <laughs> Soon come. That, yeah. I think that's amazing that you're using your platform to inspire and give back. Let's talk about the importance of giving back for you and you know how rewarding it is. Oh, very rewarding. I mean you know, when, when I was a kid, I used to have ideas in my head that, wow, Michael Jackson could probably pay off our, our national debt, maybe, <laughs> which I never did. But, like, I used to look at people who were successful and wonder, like, you know, wow, how, would, how they could help me out. And I never really ever asked someone like that, but I always felt so great of the idea that if they did just see me one day and help me out so i tend to be that type of star sometimes where you know i'll be in a club where people are buying bottles and whatnot and i come out of the club and i'll see a dude standing there who actually has wiped my bicycle off because i took a bicycle to the club oh, i wow. rode my bicycle in manhattan to the club and chained it up so the <laughs> dude's wiped my bicycle off and I, don't, I know he didn't know who i was so i was appreciative of it and i gave mm. him a hundred bucks so it's like he was like, whoa, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that instead of spending that 300 bucks on the bottles, it was easy, easier for me to do, to give him 100 bucks, you know what I mean? Um, sometimes those things uh, bring more of a blessing to you than you blessing yourself with the bottle, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. 100%. 100%. It's, it's it's always good to be humble, to give back, especially when you have the platform to do so like you do. You know, what's the best advice someone ever gave you in your life or maybe a mantra you live by? Uh, my mom gave me a couple, like every day she gives me great advice, but she gave me advice one time when I was a kid and it was about life being like waves. She mm. said it goes up and down in waves and um. You have to be able to ride those waves. One day you're on the top of the wave and you mm. feel amazing and you can see everything and you feel on top of the world. But then the wave goes down and you go down and you're in the valley now and there's two waves above you and all you can see is two two walls of water. And um, I think that kind of helped me to pace my life out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where I know it's, I, from that statement, I can realize that life is not always going to be Hunky dory and happy and so you I was looking to be up on top and that's just not possible. Mm-hmm. And so so there's times where you you may be and I'm sorry to judge people who do have a problem, but but um yeah, that's just my, my analogy of it. It's like you can't always be on top and you must be at the bottom for sometimes you must you must be there to be able to see uh how to get yourself out, you know what I mean? And and it's such a a big accomplishment when you do so that was the biggest advice in my life uh, it, it gave me patience it gave me an understanding of timing mm-hmm. it gave me um uh just resilience mm-hmm. it gave me this this ambition or this this philosophy to just keep trying trying again if a uh, 10 time you cry 10 times you dry your eye you know what i mean mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's that's great advice. You know, you've worked with such big artists as well. You've worked with Sia, Beyonce. Who's been your favorite artist to collab with so far? I always say Rihanna, and it's true because we did a song that went to number nine on the Billboard charts in the playlist, mm-hmm. um, which meant that no company didn't support it, and it just went there by itself. And this was before Umbrella, and 
it was really cool for me to pick that rhythm out with my friend's studio that I took her to in Jamaica. And that was the next thing about it. It was so good to me is that most of the collabs I've done have been done over the internet or I went to where those persons were. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Afrojack in Holland or when I went to Miami and recorded with Beyonce. But, but Rihanna came to Jamaica and she saw the beach, she saw the club, she saw, you know, just, just the, the way how we eat, what restaurants we eat at. And so it was like having someone come to my hometown, which was... It's just important to me, you know what I mean? That, that felt really good. So big up to her I hear She's doing a dancehall album, which I'm very, very happy, very in here. Um, reason being, as I say, I'm also happy because she's the only pop star that I hear saying that I'm doing a dancehall album. Most people do dancehall. If they do it, they don't big it up. They don't, they don't say to everybody, this is dancehall. So yeah. uh, hats off to her because she's been doing, and even though we haven't heard nothing for quite a few years, uh, I know she's going to be doing good at it when, when she does uh, release, it, you know what I mean? Yeah, speaking of dance hall and you know, your hometown, Jamaica, you know, you've stayed authentic to your roots. Let, let's talk about that and how it's influenced your music and how you've managed to stay authentic to those roots. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm confused when people ask me, how come you're still in Jamaica? I'm confused at that. They don't understand how much I love my, 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 my city, my home, my town, my, my culture, my country. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't do the culture just to get famous and just to make money and just to get with girls. I did it because I, I love every part of it. I may not do every part of it. Like you may not hear me on reggae roots rhythms all the time, talking reality all the time. You may not hear me doing a gun song all the time, but I love every part of my culture. I, I, I think it's vibrant and beautiful and I, I never wanted my kids to grow up anywhere else. I didn't want to ever leave. I would like to own properties somewhere, but I don't, at, at this point in time, I still only own my home here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I think that Jamaican people and the culture here made me what I am today and who I am today. I have a big family that's here. Uh, we do have family that's gone abroad and they long to be home as well. Um, you know, I, 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 I learned so much from everyone here mm -hmm. that for me to just say, oh great, I've made it off of this culture now, let me get away from it is yeah. weird to me. So yeah. I, 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 I want to embrace it. I want to take part in it. I want to be the next step for people. So that's why mm -hmm. I'm also producing now. I have a label called Dutty Rock, mm -hmm. which I produce, uh, uh, you know, artists like myself, uh, Left Side, Future Fambo, Beatman, Monte Killer, I've produced already as well. Mm -hmm. uh, people like uh, Conscience. Uh, yeah, but I have a song with me, I'm Butcher Banton, I'm going to put out some. Oh, wow. So we, um, we, we look to take part in the history of of the culture in that respect you know what i mean i know i'm not the be all and end all of the culture i am one of the most popular people in it mm. but so i feel a sense of duty of, of responsibility to to shine light on some other people you know i'm like Chi ching ching is my first artist signee which i put an album out for called turning tables last year mm -hmm. and um uh now we're looking towards doing a dirty cup uh, album as well as stuff I'm doing with Island Records. I'm big up to Island Records because you know a lot of people have like a, a, um, a situation nowadays where they're th they're in a 360 and they own it. So mm -hmm. The only way you could make you know be be a, 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 a artist that's um, taken care of by the record company and label is if you're on a 360 deal, which means they do everything for you, but they take a chunk out of everything that you do, even if you take a picture. So they left me alone. They was like, we don't have to have a 360. We just want to do business with you and make music with you. And you can produce your own stuff too, which is amazing. And this time, it's kind of big, it's kind of been cool to be able to to do both projects, my Dutty Rock projects and also my, my island projects. So big up to everybody at Island and thank you for believing in my music and reggae and dance our music as well. Yeah. And what are you currently working on? What are your current projects? What's what's in the works right now? Um, working on a couple of different things. I have a few, you know, I did a song with J Balvin last year mm -hmm. or actually a couple of years ago, two two years now. Mm -hmm. And um 
that went so well and I did another song with Anita and DJ Snake which we put out I think for DJ Snake mm -hmm. um, so so um, that that kind of world is doing a lot of good stuff for me I did a song with Louis Fonzie just the other day mm -hmm. um, and who else can I speak about in the genre um, I'm also doing some works with uh, uh, Dirty Rock my, comp my my production company with Junior Gang and a couple of other Latino artists as well, which should be pretty cool. Um, uh, right now, I'm still promoting Carl Nami, which is the last song we put out with Island Records. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm still promoting stuff that we put out on Dirty Rock, which was uh, you know, captioned earlier this year. And also, uh, something we just put out called Fresh Prince of J.A. Oh, Very yeah. cool song with Tara Riley, which is... Uh, yeah, that's uh, my boy's production, but we produce together, so he runs my label. So this one is strictly his project, though. But it's a real cool project. You could check out uh, Taris Riley's video. It's really reminiscent of the the whole, uh, what you call, uh, Will Smith, uh, Fresh Prince of oh. Bel-Air thing, where they have uh, Carlton in it and everybody. <laughs> it's really funny and cool. So Jamaican style still, but you know how it is. Uh, hold <laughs> on, meet me, my little son. It's Levi. Say hi, Levi. Hi. 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 You need a lollipop? Okay. All right, my boy. Yeah. Sean, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been a pleasure and honor to have you. So thank you so much and come back anytime. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And from beautiful Jamaica, we say to you all, I hope that we go out free up soon so you could come here because I'm not coming over there. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll be there soon. But yeah, big up and enough love. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.